Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, as I was presented, I'm Rodrigo Cedeño, and um, I'm presenting today the work uh, of the paper we published uh, called Collaborative Validation User Contributed Data Using a Geospatial Blockchain Approach uh, of the Similar Case Study. Um, it was developed by uh, Andrea Folini and me, and with the supervision of uh, Professor Brovelli at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, this is a project that belongs to Interreg, so uh, it's a project uh, of Simile, which Andrea in uh, the slides will explain what is exactly Simile. So uh, first of all, I want to give you a quick uh, context because I know that for some people this may be a the blockchain may be a, a very new topic and it seems very complicated and it's also used as a buzzword, but uh, I will explain it in a very simple way so that those who are not familiarized understand it and uh, grab the concept. So uh, first of all, the um, internet has evolved uh, through different stages. The first stage was at the very beginning of the internet Web 1.0. Uh, this was um, the internet basically as a read-only network, static, and we we could uh, access to two web pages, uh, but but in a static way. Then uh, we saw the evolution of internet, and we saw an application layer over the inter uh, Web 1.0 and we called it this uh, Web 2.0. So it was more uh, interaction between uh, the, the users. So we have read and write, it's dynamic, and as I said, it has this application layer. Now, um, in this moment, we are uh, at the very beginning of a new transition. The transition is uh, Web 3.0, there are many um, definitions of Web 3.0, but as we will use it in this presentation, we are focused on decentralization. So uh, we are generating trust uh, between users with a new infrastructure that is verified. And as I said, very importantly, it's decentralized. So uh, we no longer have a very big player deciding what we see and what gets approved, but it's more a democratic um, system. Okay, so now that we know that we are focusing on decentralization, um, I can speak a little bit about blockchain because blockchain is the main infrastructure that is uh, leading decentralization. So what is blockchain? As the name says, it's a chain of blocks. Uh, these blocks can be seen in a very simple way as text files that have certain characteristics like uh, header, body, footer, and other characteristics that I will not uh, describe at this moment. But the important thing is that we have a body inside a block which has a list of transactions. Once uh, the, the number of transactions get to the limit, because there's a, a, a certain limit of each block on the number of transactions, we uh, close the block. This block uh, then gets approved by the community, by the users uh, present in the network. And um, with um, a, a democratic in a democratic way, these blocks get approved. This is talking about the first block. But then we need to generate more blocks because we have more transactions. So we generate a new block, which has the same characteristics as the previous one. This second block has uh, is connected to the previous. But how is it connected? It's connected through a hash. The, a hash is a string that uh, with an algorithm represents uh, any kind of file. So it is unique and it is practically uh, not repeatable. So um, 
when we have a file and we calculate the hash of, of a file, we have a unique number. If we change a single bit of this file, the hash changes, okay? So uh, we calculate the hash of the previous block, and then we put this string into the new block, okay? So now we have a new block with transactions with the hash of the previous block, and when we close it, we do the same. The, um, by consensus, it gets voted and approved. Then we calculate again the hash of this new one, but the, the hash of this new one has also the hash of the previous in its, in its, in its header. So this means that if anyone tries to tamper or, mo or modify one of the previous blocks, then the chain is broken. We, we have um, useless uh, following blocks which need to be recomputed. So it makes it uh, very computer, uh, computing expensive to generate the new blocks, and it takes a lot of time. So, and it's, uh, it must reach consensus to get approved. So it is uh, a, a system that really has very good characteristics, and specifically for geospatial data, which is uh, immutability. It's decentralized because it's distributed among the peers, uh, consensus-based, everyone agrees on the truth, and it's traceable. We can see uh, in an open way all of the transactions. We can trace them, and we can see how a file or a transaction was, uh, has changed uh, in time. We are used to hear uh, about the blockchain uh, because of Bitcoin, okay? So it's, it's super famous because of Bitcoin and many people even don't like it because uh, they, they see it as this buzzword, like everyone want wants to say blockchain and wants to, I don't know, become rich from one day to the other using blockchain. But in reality, the concept is, it is very, very useful to preserve the characteristics that I mentioned previously. Uh, and uh, this, in fact, blockchain was firstly introduced by Bitcoin. But after some years, six years after uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum was, uh, was created, which is another blockchain, which works as I previously described, but has a very uh, important characteristic. In this blockchain, we can execute scripts. So this opens a world of possibilities. We can use in a decentralized way, immutable scripts in the network and do things that we, we want to do in the network. So um, currently, what about geospatial? Because there are health solutions, there are financial solutions, there are art solutions uh, to sell art through the blockchain, but what about geospatial? Currently, there are two uh, projects that have been developed about geospatial. But what, what do I mean geospatial? Because we have something called geoblockchain, which is not sharing geospatial data. It's about uh, making the blockchain safer by introducing geolocation. But we're not interested in using the financial uh, transactions and verify them with, with um, geolocation. What we want to do is to share uh, geospatial information. So this is our main focus. And there are two projects that have been developed in a uh, closer way to this concept that we want, which is FOAM and DGIS. FOAM, uh, it's a deployed project. It's growing. And the main idea of this uh, project is to create a crowdsourced map, a crowdsourced map that solves the problems of location encoding and standard, standards, user experience, and verification of authenticity of location data. These three things are solved by using cryptospatial coordinates, which is a, a, a way in which we can encode um, geolocations uh, we have the spatial index and visualizer, so it's a new way in which we can extract 
information from the blockchain and see it in a map. This is, this is awesome. And proof of location. So with proof of location, we verify the authenticity of the data and it solves many problems, but it, it doesn't, uh, it's not used to share geospatial data as we normally sh uh, share it between us uh, in a geospatial community. And DGIS, this project is much closer to what we are looking for and is to create, uh, the, the objective was to create a decentralized platform uh, to enable geologists and engineers to share their work. Um, it is focused on, on solving ownership rights and making it democratic. So it's already part, the characteristics of the blockchain are those. So it's, it's solving it with the blockchain. And it uses a ranking mechanism so that when someone shares uh, a piece of work, then um, other users can rank it and decide if the data is good or bad or uh, so that other users can be guided uh, by this. Um, and uh, that, that's basically it. The problem with DGIS is that it's not deployed. It was only a concept that was stopped uh, in late 2019, and there are no more information about it, and, and, and that's it. Uh, the use case that we decided to use to test uh, our uh, prototype uh, is uh, the similar project, uh, which is uh, an interreg project with, uh, between uh, Switzerland and Italy for the monitoring of uh, the lake of the water, uh, the water of the lakes in the insubric areas, which are uh, Maggiore, uh, Lugano, and Como, and. Similar as a lot of data sources, but we are interested in particular in the section of uh, citizen science, where uh, the citizens can collect data about the water, uh, and in particular uh, the position, uh, images, uh, and other measurements about the weather, and so on, uh, through an open source uh, mobile application. And after this data is collected, it is uh, available in uh, an open uh, web application where uh, the administrators of the system can also manually validate it, which is uh, a quite time consuming uh, task. The, our prototype uh, is not completely integrated uh, with uh, Simile, but it mostly simulates the environment of, uh, of Simile. Our uh, prototype is composed by two main parts, which, is, uh, which are uh, the blockchain architecture and on the other side, uh, a web application to interact uh, with our blockchain architecture. Our architecture is uh, inspired uh, by previous uh, uh, geo-blockchain applications. Uh, and the basic idea is to map uh, um, discrete portion of the earth to uh, location on the blockchain and the uh, area, areas of the Earth are represented by uh, discrete global grid system cells, which are uh, a multi-resolution grid of the Earth. Uh, but our solution is more uh, um, specific to towards uh, uh, data sharing and the evaluation of uh, user collected data from other users. The development of uh, our architecture is done on the Solidity programming language, which allows the reuse of all the code on uh, the environment, the Ethereum virtual machine, which is the wider ecosystem for blockchain development, and it is deployed and tested on the Velas blockchain, which uh, is uh, a particular blockchain with uh, very fast uh, transactions and also a really low cost of transactions. The architecture is composed by two main types of uh, smart contracts, which are the registries and the cells. The cells rep represent a single DGGS cell and have the, the goal to store all of the data that's inserted in that area. Uh, in the cell, we don't uh, include uh, the entire files, but only their hash while the entire file is stored on the interplanetary file system, which is a distributed file system which uses uh, hash to index the file, the contained files. This allows to, to reduce the used space. Uh, for each file, we also store their owner, uh, 
a list of the votes on that file and also for each vote uh, their uh, re uh, related voter. The owner of uh, the files can also remove or update his files and all of the previous version of the files are still kept uh, on our system. While the registry is basically an index for all the cells that uh, are in our system, uh, only the cells that contain some data are, uh, are currently stored and it can be used by external application to query data about uh, some specific areas without uh, querying every time the entire uh, data set. And every registry is associated to a single DGGS resolution. So if we want multiple size for the areas, uh, uh, we have to deploy multiple registries. One of the main goals during our development was to create a framework that can be reused by other users. And to achieve this, uh, our contracts are uh, composed by a general abstract contract that is uh, uh, then specified for our, for our uh, solution, but can be reused and extended by other, other users uh, in different uh, use cases with different requirements. And there is also the possibility to limit uh, the modification of the contracts to their creator to create a more controlled environment and also to with few code changes to store uh, different data instead of uh, the user votes. Now I will leave uh, the word again to Rodrigo to explain the web application part. Yeah, so here we have some screenshots of, of the demo that we developed. Uh, here, we, we won't uh, show you how we interact, but in, in fact, we are showing you like how it works, which is having a login page and we have the possibility of review observations and uh, make new observations and see the observations that we created to edit them. So for example, uh, we have the screen to review others' observations. Here uh, we have the possibility to reject a point or accept it. And um, we also can see our personal uh, points to validate. In this case, we can delete the observation or edit the observation. And finally, the, the screen of uh, the new observations where we, right now we introduce manually the latitude, longitude and insert a JSON file uh, to, to register the, 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 the point. So uh, as a conclusion, we can see that the geospatial blockchain is feasible uh, to be used uh, in projects for data sharing. And um, although small amount of work uh, has been done by FOAM and DGIS, it is worth, uh, uh, it, it is a good progress in developing the concept. And both IPFS uh, and attribute based search uh, must be implemented in future steps, which are uh, to develop a, a real geospatial in infrastructure to share uh, our projects uh, with the community. <laughs>